When it comes to the Nintendo GameCube, there's no shortage of mods that let us boot games right off of an SD card. For me, it began with PicoBoot from WebHDX, a project that kicked off a huge resurgence in GameCube modding. Since then, we've seen some really clever solutions hit the scene, projects like the Flippy Drive. And now there's a brand new contender, PicoLoader. This one brings some exciting twists of its own, and I think it's definitely worth a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I'm really excited to show you yet another way to run homebrew on your Nintendo GameCube. This is called Pico Loader, and it's actually pretty exciting for a few reasons. First, it's another way to run homebrew on the GameCube, such as Swiss, which allows us to launch games right from an SD card. Second, it's actually super simple to install when compared to similar mods for the console, say for example Pico Boot, which does require you to solder directly to the IPL chip on the motherboard. This one doesn't. Pico Loader uses a very similar approach to the Flippy Drive, which utilizes this custom flex ribbon cable that sits in between the optical drive assembly and the motherboard connector. Now, third and probably the most exciting thing is that it's completely open source. That means all the files are available on GitHub and you can easily make your own and it's available to the modding community for further improvements. This project comes from a GameCube enthusiast from Germany named Mikeo. He developed the custom code for the Raspberry Pi Pico, which this mod is based on, giving the GameCube the ability to run homebrew. Now he enlisted the help of another talented modder named Silversteel, who designed the custom ribbon cable, as well as the 3D printable bracket that mounts the Pico to the console. Together, they developed this really simple mod chip for the GameCube, so let's dive in and check it out. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you all the parts you need to install Pico Loader. Then I'll show you how to install it into the GameCube, take a look at its features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. Okay, so for this project, you'll need a few things. Obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi Pico like this one here, but according to Mikeo, you can even use some clone Picos since he made the firmware run at a reduced clock speed of 200 megahertz. But he still does recommend getting an authentic Pico for perfect compatibility. Additionally, you'll need this bracket which you can 3D print yourself, as well as two M2 5mm screws. And this specific diode as outlined in their GitHub page is also required. And lastly, you will need this custom flex ribbon cable which you can have fabricated from companies like PCBWay, which just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. If you have an idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCBWay provides you with the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro mods to the next level, PCBWay is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCBWay to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, so with all the parts in hand, let me show you just how easy it is to install this into your GameCube. Okay, so as usual, we're gonna tear down the GameCube, but we just need to get to the point where we can remove the DVD drive, so not all the way. Now, one thing I did wanna note is that this mod is compatible with both the DOL001 and the 101 revision of the GameCube. It is not, however, compatible with the Panasonic Q, but it will work for the main two revisions. All right, with the optical drive removed, let's go ahead and grab our flex ribbon cable. We need to go ahead and fold it into a W-like shape as shown here. Do note that I have the DVD drive side of the ribbon cable facing upward when doing this. I like to basically just gently crease the ribbon cable so that it can hold its shape and don't go overboard when trying to make the folds. Then as shown here, we need to insert the ribbon cable into the DVD drive connector on the motherboard. This is a bit of a fiddly process and it really only goes in one way. Just take your time and it should go in. 
You want to make sure that the ribbon cable extension where the Pico will be installed is going away from the center of the console, and then fold the sides down as shown. And once complete, it should look like this. Then very carefully reinstall the optical drive back onto the motherboard, making sure the ribbon passes through this narrow opening in the RF shield, while also keeping the ribbon on the inside of this support pillar. And once you're sure the ribbon is properly placed and not getting caught on anything, you can firmly press the optical drive into place. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna temporarily install the 3D printed mounting bracket with a single screw here. Then we'll take the Raspberry Pi Pico and align the screw holes on the ribbon cable and the mounting bracket so we can then secure it with our two M2 screws. What's actually really great about doing this is that now all the pads on the ribbon cable are aligned with the Pico. Once it's fully installed, we can then proceed to solder in all the pads on both sides of the Pico. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the screw and then pivot the bracket over like so, and then re-secure it again with the same screw. This gives us access to the other side of the ribbon so that we can now solder in the diode. Once complete, go ahead and remove the screw for the last time, and then fully secure the bracket with two screws. And the extra remaining screw can be secured here, which is really great, as I do hate having extra screws just lying around. Now we can go ahead and start to reassemble the GameCube. Now before we install the top shell, we do need to load the Pico with the Pico Loader firmware. So go ahead and plug one end of a USB cable to the Pico, and before you plug the other end into the computer, be sure to press and hold the boot cell button first, and then go ahead and plug it in. Then you should see a new browser window appear on your screen. So on your computer, you'll want to navigate over to the Pico Loader GitHub and download the pre-configured UF2 file. You can also apparently make your own, but just downloading the pre-configured one is far simpler. I already have a copy of it saved on my desktop, and all you need to do is drag and drop it into the browser window for the Pico. Once a copy's over, the Pico will automatically disconnect, and then you can go ahead and unplug it from the computer. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the top shell. And there you have it, we have successfully installed Pico Loader onto the GameCube. Honestly, this was a very simple installation, and while it's not plug and play, since it does require you to solder the Pico and the diode to the custom ribbon cable, both Makeo and Silversteel are working on a completely plug and play solution that will also be open source. So be sure to follow both these guys online to stay up to date with their progress. I'll have links to where you can find them down below in the video description. Anyway, let's take a look at the features Pico Loader has to offer. And well, it's pretty simple. After installing an SD card loaded with Swiss into either the memory card slot like I have here using an SD Gecko, or using an SD to SB2 adapter on the bottom, simply power on the console, and voila! We boot right into Swiss, and we can see our entire library of games. And of course, since we are using that Special Flex ribbon cable, we can also utilize the optical drive, again very much like the Flippy Drive mod. And well, that's really about it. There's not too much more when it comes to the actual features. It's simple and to the point, which is perfectly fine with me. So with that, let's get right into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I think one of the most attractive things about this project is just how easy it is to install. No need to solder directly to the motherboard, and the soldering it does require is relatively simple. I like how the bracket doubles as a jig to align the Raspberry Pi to the pads on the flex ribbon cable, making it a breeze to solder in. The most challenging part was perhaps soldering in the diode on the back of the ribbon, but that wasn't too tough either. And again, for those that don't have any experience soldering or would rather have a simple drop-in solution, both Makeo and Silversteel are working on that plug and play option. These will also be open source, so you can have a service like PCBWay fully assemble one on your behalf. 
Another great thing about this mod is that it's completely reversible and does not require us to make any permanent modifications to the GameCube hardware or the shell, which is fantastic. Now, price is another potential pro. The biggest cost here is gonna be that flex ribbon cable. Ordering these, which typically require a minimum order quantity of five, will cost a little under 10 bucks. On top of that, a Raspberry Pi Pico adds around five bucks, and the 3D printed bracket is basically negligible, especially if you already have a 3D printer. The diode is also dirt cheap, but paying for shipping can make it relatively expensive unless you're ordering a bunch at once. So if you're planning to build only one of these for yourself, it might feel a little expensive. But the real savings will come if someone decides to produce these in larger quantities and sell them individually. That's actually something Mikeo is hoping will happen, and he also does plan to sell a few of these kits himself. So definitely be sure to follow him on social media to stay up to date on that. And the last pro is that this is an open source project, meaning anyone can make these, and it can be improved upon by the community, which is just fantastic. All right, so those are the pros. Now let's get into the cons. So when it comes to the cons, I'm gonna be really reaching here as most of these issues will be addressed at some point in the future. So one potential con is that this mod is currently incompatible with the Panasonic Q. Now this of course doesn't impact a whole lot of people and Silversteel is actually working on a variation of the ribbon cable that will make it compatible with that really expensive and rare variant of the GameCube. So yeah, not really that big of an issue at all, but it is something I wanted to mention. And well, that's basically it when it comes to the cons. Now there is something else I wanted to talk about and that's what lies ahead for the future of Pika Loader as well as other projects that Mikeo is working on. Now, something that Mikeo is currently working on for the Pico Loader is to make updating the firmware a lot easier. Currently, the firmware is based on Gecko Boot, meaning that in order to update the Raspberry Pi, you need to take off the top shell and plug it into your PC using the micro USB port. In the future, you may be able to update the firmware using Swiss by just simply adding the necessary update files to the SD card Swiss is stored on, meaning you wouldn't need to remove the top shell at all. Now, of course, this isn't guaranteed to happen, but it is something Mikeo is working on, which would make this project even more convenient. And lastly, and really just as a side note, Mikeo is also working on another very cool project for the GameCube. It's essentially a USB-C adapter that allows you to connect USB-C devices via the memory card slot. In essence, you can connect peripherals like an external hard drive to the console, which is honestly really cool. So to stay up to date with all these cool projects and any progress made with Pico Loader, I strongly suggest following both Mikeo and Silversteel. I'll have links to where you can find them down below in the video description. Well, folks, there you have it. Yet another great way to run homebrew on the GameCube. What do you all think? Definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here. So check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today and I'll catch you again next time.